operating with no power doing what what not doing what he had instructed for them to do and so when he came down and he saw them he used his very strong language oh faithless and perverse generation that's a very demanding language a very strong language that is his language of rebuke that's not a language of comfort and love he was not trying to coddle them it was it was a strong language to say oh faithless and perverse generation how long shall i be with you and this is what he was saying do you not understand that my time to be ascended to the father is at hand I've already taught you. I've already showed you. Now, why can you? Why can't you do what I'm asking you to do in this season? Amen. Amen. Come on, just smile. Amen. It's gonna be all right. Because we have to recognize that that God has left us this awesome power, this awesome responsibility to bring forth the gospel, to be able to allow to go forth with power and with the anointing of God so that lives can be transformed. What good is us coming, as, 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 as uh, Deacon Timmy said, what good is us coming if, 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 if we're not experiencing any power, if, if lives are being changed? This gospel is for now. Well, I mean, why? why? Why do we serve God? Is it for ourselves? Is it just so I can feel good? Is it so that, you know, God, because we all can have that bless me mentality, that God is all about me. God, I'm the one going through situations. I'm the one going through trials. I'm the one have this build. I'm the one need this done. And you can come to God with a me, 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 I, 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 I attitude. And that is not what the gospel was made for. God will bless you along the way. See, we have to begin to change the, 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 the mindset of the church. Because the church thinks it's all about these four walls. Man, as long as we're in here, we went to church today. No, I can go to church in the morning. I can go to church on my job. I can go to church. Uh, listen, I can go to church anywhere I invite the presence and the power of God. I'm having church. So if I can begin to praise God on my job, if I can begin to share the gospel with somebody else, and somebody else receive Christ, they receive restoration, they receive healing. I just had church. It, 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 it doesn't matter where I am. Church is about relationship, and it's about displaying the power power of God in the lives of those that need healing Bible listen Jesus said it this way he says if, if you're whole what you need a physician for so why in the world is we as the church running from conference to conference running from church to church to try to heal people that's already healed amen we spending all of our energy and all of our resources on each other hallelujah if you have <laughs> oh God oh God no, we have to position ourselves so that we can begin to present the gospel to a dying world. And we can begin to let them know that Jesus is Lord. He is our Savior. He is a healer. And the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. So there should be some signs following you. Do I have any believers in the house? Do anybody believe? Come on, let me hear your hand. Let me see your hand. Then there need to be some signs following you. What signs have followed you this week? Yeah, set that one up right there, didn't it? Mm -hmm. What signs have followed you this week? What has changed? You have to understand that everywhere Jesus went, it wasn't just in the temple. It wasn't just around the people. Everywhere he went, he went into the public house. Everywhere he went, things began to change. People's mind was transformed. Why? Because he understood, I am the church. I'm not going to church. I am the church. And wherever I am, that's where the power of God dwells. But his disciples found them in, in, in a place to where they was beginning to try to do, you know what I mean, what they saw other people do. And they begin to look at themselves and look at their programs and look at how they, their, 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 their structure. They begin to look at things more than they look to God. And the problem was, is that they failed to understand that without him they can do nothing. Amen. And so when they, when they begin to come down and Jesus begin to use um, these, these, this very strong language, he says, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? And, and, and when Jesus begin to, 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 to bring unto them, he says, listen, uh, you know, when, when the disciples, after they got through being rebuked, they, 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 they came to Jesus and they pulled Jesus apart. He said, Jesus, we don't understand. You know what I mean? Well, you know, we've we done what you told us to do. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We, we saw you do it. We practiced what you said. We, we, you know what I mean? We, we said what you said. When you said, come out, we said, come out. Huh? When you said, be ye healed, we said, Lord, be ye healed. But why couldn't we do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can we do what you've done? Huh? And Jesus said unto them, he says, it is because of your unbelief. He 
says, look at this, in, 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 in verse number 20, and Jesus answered unto them and said, because of your unbelief. Why couldn't they do it? Because of their unbelief. Why couldn't they do it? Because of their unbelief. Why couldn't they do it? Because of their unbelief. It wasn't because it was 8 o'clock in the morning. It wasn't because it was 10 o'clock at night and I'm sleeping now. It wasn't because I stayed up late last night and I don't feel like praying this morning. It wasn't because I did something I shouldn't have done last night and now I don't, I don't have the power to do it. No, God says it was because of their unbelief. He says the only reason why you could not cast them out or you could not do what I instructed you to do and what I've given you the power to do was simply because you did not believe me. Somewhere along the line, your power and, and you begin to trust in other things other than me. Because if you trust in me and my name, that devil have no choice but to come out. It, 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 it have no choice but to be healed. It have no choice but to be delivered when you do it in my name. So what was he saying? He says, listen, it is because of your unbelief. He says, for verily I say unto you that if you have faith, say faith. faith. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove henceforth to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing, say nothing. And nothing, say nothing again. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Are you listening to me this morning? He says, nothing shall be impossible unto you. But he says, how be it? This kind goes out but by prayer and fasting. Now most people when they read that, they think Jesus is talking about this kind of devil don't go out but by prayer and fasting. Because when you read that, that's what they was trying to do. They was trying to heal him and they was trying to cast out the devil. And most people they say, well, you know, I got to pray and fast to cast out the devil. Have anybody ever thought about that, Try to do that? <laughs> I'm going to mess with your theology just for a moment, just for a moment. I'm going to have to mess with you just for a moment. Because, we, because we, we don't understand the purpose of prayer and fasting. We think prayer and fasting is to do things. I need healing in my body, so I'm going to pray and fast. I need my relationship restored, so I'm going to pray and fast. I need a devil cast out of my, mm, and I, so I'm going to pray and fast. So, so I'm going to pray and fast because my praying and fasting is what's going to cast, cast the devil out. That is not what he was talking about. He did not say this kind of devil go out by prayer and fasting. He says this kind of unbelief that is in your heart does not come out but by prayer and fasting. And so you have to recognize because he says all things are possible to them that believe. So if I can believe the devil got to come out. If I can believe healing have to begin, begin to take place. If I believe then restoration have to come unto my household. But I have to recognize and understand that sometimes I can get caught up in the things of God and moving and doing the things of God to where it seems like, you know what I mean, my faith just ain't what it used to be. Have anybody ever been there? You know, you, you, you got some disappointment, some things that you thought was going to happen, then happen the way that you thought they was going to happen. Some people that you trusted in that let you down. Some people that you thought was going to be there for you was not there. And it began to hurt you and it began to disappoint you. And what happens is your faith began to dwindle. All of us have been there. Now, all of us is getting bat have gotten battled on the, on, on, the, on the battlefield. We've all gotten scarred, amen. All of us are not strong faith all the time, 100% of the time. And so what God is beginning to tell us and to get to understand that the purpose of prayer and fasting is when you find yourself weak in faith, when you find yourself weak in believing God, then you need to pray and you need to fast because through that it builds up your belief system. And once it builds up your belief system, then all things are possible to them that believe. What is it that you need God to do in your life? You don't have to look outwardly. Your prayer and fasting is not going to bring it to you. No, your prayer and fasting is going to build up your belief system so that you can begin to speak with faith. Amen. So we have to recognize that our prayer and fasting, you, you know what I mean? We can claim some things and we can say, okay, God, I'm praying and I'm fasting for this. God, I'm believing that you're going to, you know what I mean, bless this. You're going to help me to be financially free. You're going to help me to be healed. You're going to help me to do that. But you got to understand your prayer and fasting is not what's going to do the, do the work. It is your belief system. The purpose of your prayer and fasting is for you to get closer to God. As you get closer to God, God says, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Once you begin to deny your flesh and you begin to get closer to God, now you begin to believe God because you begin to see God for who he is. Yeah, 
See, when you allow sin and doubt and unbelief and things to come into your life, only thing they do is put a, a wall between you and God, begin to blind your eyes between God so you don't see God for who he is. The psalmist says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. What is he talking about? You need to make God bigger than your problem. You need to make him bigger than your circumstance. You need to make him bigger than your financial issue. You need to make him bigger. When you begin to magnify God and you see God for who he is, now your problem seems so small because you serve a big and mighty and great God the reason why we cannot see God for who he is because we're so busy magnifying our problems magnifying our circumstances bigger than God so we're murmuring and complaining more than we're worshiping we're murmuring and complaining more than we're praising so when we come to God we see him very small because we see this big old thing that just happened in my life is bigger than our God but once you begin to pray and fast, your spirit begin to get sensitive to God. And when you begin to get sensitive to God, you begin to see God. And once you begin to see him, you begin to believe him. Because he show you how holy he is. He show you how awesome he is. He show you how powerful he is. And you begin to understand things that there is nothing in my life that God cannot change. There's nothing in my life that God cannot heal. There's no problem, no circumstance, no issue that I may be in that God cannot make it a way of an excuse. Escape. The only time we stop believing that is when we allow our circumstances and our problems to get bigger than our God. And we have to recognize that happens sometimes. Come on, can we be honest? Come on, that happens sometimes. We can put our trust in the wrong thing. Sometimes we can lose a job and stop believing God. Sometimes somebody can walk out on us. We can lose a spouse or we can lose something and then walk out on God. Because that thing become bigger than God in our life. And then we have a, 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 a problem believing God, and then church don't work. Because church can only work through your faith. The Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. And when my faith is weak, then the power is weak. Is that right? So when we begin to think about prayer and fasting and we begin to think about what is the purpose of my fast? The purpose of my fast is so that I can desensitize my flesh. So I can punish my flesh so it will not be able to rule in my life. Mark chapter number 9 says, verse number 23 says, Jesus said unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. There are some things that God is about to release in your life. And we've been saying this. There are some things that God is about to do in your life. But it's according to your faith. It's according to you believing God. Can you believe that God is able to do this? Can you believe that he can heal you? Can you believe that he can, he can jumpstart your ministry? Do you believe that he can heal your family? Do you believe that he can restore different things in your life? Then you have to begin to get into a position to where you believe God. Because God says all things are possible to them that believe. There is, there is no limits on God when you believe God. Sometimes it's called radical faith, just crazy, just radical faith. Just when I just, listen, I take God at his word. You know what I mean? I take God at his word. I don't care what nobody else say. I don't care what nobody else do. I take God at his word. See, that word believe.